And uh, let's talk uh, about the uh, illustrator is Kim. How do you say Kim's last name? Blockwit. Did uh, you work with her uh, ahead of time? Because this, and I know that you know, obviously you, you you're an editor of picture books. You have the experience of authors having to trust their illustrator, but you're really trusting the illustrator uh, through parts of this to deliver whole, almost whole scenes uh, between characters and and pivotal character moments are are delivered. Uh, plus, plus some of the best, not the best jokes, but some. Some of the really quality jokes are are uh, are placed in those uh, illustrations as well. So, how much did you work with her ahead of time, or did you have notes? How, how did you pull that off? Mm -hmm. So, um, I will say this was Kim's first book that she illustrated, and I think she did an amazing job. Um, and I, for the art, I gave like vague descriptions about what each thing would be. So, saying like, you know, this shows them in Jordan's hothouse, though I didn't really say much about what it would be. And then, but then I would write down what the dialogue bubbles would be that would appear in that art. Or then if there were like any labels for things in the art, I would write down what those labels would be. So all the text in the art, all the like jokes in the art um, came from me, but you know, um, it'd be like, let's see if we can pull up one here. Um, so like, this is just the first one that I came up with. Um, so here I said, like, you know, here's what Maddie says, here's what Daniel says, here's what Janet says. Um, but I didn't describe anything about, you know, what they'd be wearing or what their motions would be or where they'd be sitting or, um, you know, all that came from her. And I learned a lot about how to do this actually from editing Max Brallier's Last Kids on Earth series, which is another one where the art and text are um, really deeply intertwined and I've edited a number of books in that series so I've seen how Max describes um, just how much he needs in the art and what he and and what he just like leaves to the illustrator's imagination um, and so I used um, an approach very similar to his as I was writing my manuscript. So you're writing it's a brief description of what the art's going to look like as well as the dialogue or are there doodles someplace? There are uh, no doodles I can't draw. So <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll maybe say like, you know, the description for this one would be like, um, Maddie, Janet, and my friend Daniel celebrating together. And then it would have their, you know, each of their dialogue bubbles and she can decide what celebrating together looks like. Oh, well, that's still a huge degree of trust right there. That, that, that's characterization. I'm not a very visual person, so it's not like I have some specific vision in my head and I'm going to be disappointed if it doesn't look like that. Anything that I say, I'm sort of like, yeah, that seems cool. I, I wouldn't have pictured that. I don't know. Um, yeah, I didn't initially envision the book with art, actually. It was my agent's idea. He said, you know, people are so into graphic novels right now, and would you do this book as a graphic novel? Um, and I was like, I don't think so, because like I, I've, never, I've never written a graphic novel and I don't read a ton of graphic novels, and therefore I was like, I don't really feel comfortable at this stage, like, writing in that format. And I was like, but I have read a ton of Last Kids on Earth in, like, great detail, so I know how to do a book where illustrations are, you know, playing a part in telling the story, but it's not pure, like, comic book panels. So I was like, I could do that, and does that seem like a good compromise? And my agent said yes, so 